Hey everyone, it's Monday, so a Mindful Monday lesson. So we are going to learn a new practice called the pedal practice today. But I want to remind you that you can use mindfulness anytime. You just need a little bit of calm, you need to find your focus, you just need a minute, kind of like a minute break from life. You can use this, you can use your practices. So we've learned finger breathing, right? Where we inhale up and we exhale down and we inhale up. And we exhale down, do it with me. Inhaling up and down. Focusing on that finger. Up it comes and it curls around and comes down. And inhale and exhale. So we've learned finger breathing. That's something we've learned. We've learned just taking deep breaths and focusing on the breath. So let's try that next. So we sit in our mindful posture. And we just inhale and we grow taller. And we exhale and we relax. One more breath. Inhale, grow taller. And exhale, relax. So we've learned just focusing on one or two breaths. So next we're gonna learn something called the pedal practice. So these are for times that you really need something to focus on, that you, you can't even settle your mind enough to focus on the breath or to sit still. So this gives you something, finger breathing gives you something to touch and the pra pedal practice gives you something to focus on. So take your fingers and kind of bring them all together. So the tips are facing and you can bring your hands up. And again, you sit in that mindful posture, nice and tall because it helps with your breathing. And what you do is you just inhale and you open those fingers up. And you exhale, you bring them back together and touch. So let's try four. Inhale, open. And exhale, bringing them back together, feeling them touch. And inhale. And exhale. And one more. Inhale. And exhale. So again, a little bit of something, something fun, something for you to focus on some movement. So that's something you can try too when you're doing, when you're needing a little break from the world or just finding some time to focus yourself. Just try that pedal practice a few times. Use that breath to reset your body and hopefully you'll feel better afterwards. So happy Mindful Monday. We're going to go into some mindful movement today because we've been sitting like this hunched over a lot over our screens and it's hard to get back into that. We're going to do some twisting, standing up tall, some movements that work on the, our backs for our warm up today before we get into our challenge week. All right, happy Mindful Monday and stay tuned for some mindful movement next. So here's a little mind, mindful movement for you. Thinking about twisting and turning, standing up nice and tall, really good posture. So do each exercise between five and 10 times. And if you need a break anytime today, you can go through these exercises again for a little brain break. Enjoy. So another challenge week is upon us. Um, I hope you enjoyed a little bit of that mindful movement. Use these mindful movement exercises if you need a brain break during the day. So we can use our mindfulness if we need a bit of a focus, um, but you also need to take some breaks in between classes and just get up and move. So these mindful movement exercises are a great thing to do. You can just stand there, even in the middle of class, they don't take a lot, they're not very disruptive. So you can stand up, do a few torso twists, do a few hug of trees, and then sit back down and hopefully just with a little bit of that movement, you can find yourself refocused and ready to keep going with your coursework. So again, brain breaks, very important. Using that mindfulness when you need it or just getting up and moving when you need it. So challenge we continue is, like I said, proficiency skills for our gymnasts. It's levels six and five today. Coming up, think of ways that you can extend. So don't just do the skills. Think of perfecting them, think of practicing them, linking the movements together, um, creating a sequence, getting those heart rates up. Maybe you don't just jump rope for 35 seconds.
Maybe you do it three times for 35 seconds. So thinking of ways that you can extend to make yourself stronger and a little bit fitter. Video assessing yourself is a great one as well. Just put your iPad on, watch your movements, and then see how you can improve on it. Like I said, or like we learned in class, often what we think we're doing isn't always what we're really doing. So second one is the stair challenge, step challenge. You've done the Washington Monument, you've done the Eiffel Tower, and now we're doing the Statue of Liberty. It's a little bit shorter, it's not even 400 steps, which some of you will seem super easy compared to the Washington Monument. But again, breaking it down, trying to finish each monument before you move on to the next one. And last but not least, we have some more soccer skills. I have um, Alex Minton. I think a lot of you had him as a coach. He's gonna do some short little intros to, for me for our soccer skills. So he's giving you a little bit of skill work using the outside of your foot, your little baby toe, rather than your inside of the foot for ball control when it comes to dribbling. And then at the end of it, there is a little short clip on Maxwell doing some cone agility work. So you can step that up. It, you don't need a lot of space to do agility work. You just need maybe one, take a can of peas, two cans of peas, put them in the floor, and just dribble in and out using some of the tips that Alex gives you. So your challenge for this week for soccer is to continue on with those soccer juggling, seeing how many times you can keep it up, and then work on that ball control when it comes to dribbling through cones. So challenge week continues. Good luck, everyone. Okay, so we're on to proficiency awards five and six. I can imagine, my gymnast, that you are doing an amazing job with your um, skills. So here, moving on to six and five. So again, you can always pause as you go through. You can make a list of these. A great idea would be to take a notebook that you can use for your gymnastics skills. And next time we are in school, you can show me the progress you've made. You can show me the skills you've done. Again, maybe you've rated yourself and made little notes of how you can make improvements. And when we get back to school, I'll be handing out badges for those of you who can show me all these skills. So that was six. And here is five. Again, they're getting a little bit trickier and a little bit stronger in duration or strong, longer in time. So I feel like the theme for these, it's a lot of shifting of weight and linking shapes together. So there's a lot of going from one shape to another, a lot of holding of balances, a lot of starting and stopping. So hopping, skipping, jumping with a run and a lot of strength work, as you can see. So five and six is what we have. Again, getting your heart rates up, working on that fitness, getting stronger, maybe that baby shark ab challenge. I'll try to get you another ab challenge for this week. So five and six, you've got two days to work on these. Good luck. Any questions, you can message me on Teams or send me a message on Seesaw. Another week, another monument. Have most of you made it up to the Washington Monument and to the top of the Eiffel Tower? If so, fantastic. If not, keep stepping, keep, I would love for you to reach the top of each monument. And if you haven't finished it, just continue on that one and then go to the next one. Remember, our distance learning is a marathon, not a sprint. So keep track. Again, one of the ideas I kind of like is making a passport. So keeping track of those steps, ticking it off when you've gotten to the top, and then going to the next page of your notebook. And when we get back to school, I will be awarding some step awards to those who have made it to the top of these monuments. So this week we have uh, the Statue of Liberty, nearly 400 steps up to the Statue of Liberty. So figure out how many steps you have how many times you need to go up and down them to get those steps in and mark it in your notebook. All right, steppers, keep going. Job well done. Hi, my name's Alex Minton with DC Stoddard. I wanted to talk to you about some dribbling techniques that you can be working on um, while you're staying at home. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look about is speed dribbling. 
So a lot of players tend to dribble with the inside of their foot. On this part, we want to see if we can touch the ball with our little toes moving forward. Okay, so when we're sprinting forward, our body and our feet are then going forward at the same time. So we're coming in nice and quick like that. Okay, so that's the first part. The second part, what I'd like to see you do, is if you're comfortable with that, can you do it with your head up? Okay, so can you then speed dribble and see where the players on your team or the opposition, so you have a good idea of where they are? And then the last thing that I want you to really focus on when you're looking to dribble is doing it at speed. Okay, so you start off nice and slow and then see if you can change pace and go a little bit quicker. Okay, so they're the three things that I want you to concentrate on for this week. Using your little toes so you're facing forward. Okay, trying to get your head up and then see if you can increase your speed. Good luck, have fun. This week we're going to work on ball control. So dribbling that ball through some cones, you don't need a lot of space. Remember using the outside of that foot. And just nice, slow and controlled. He's going to speed it up a little bit now. Excellent. Trying both right foot and left foot. And this is the final one a little bit quicker. In and out of those cones. Nice and quick. So that's your challenge. Let's work on some agility and ball control. Thank you.